Hey guys, welcome back and welcome to episode two. I hope I'll be a little less clunky and awkward sounding. Maybe that's just me. Maybe I'm just self-conscious, but I felt like re-listening to the first episode, I was like, I sound kind of not like myself, but I don't know. Maybe this just takes some getting used to. So like I said, welcome back. I'm pretty excited to talk about some more stuff today. Um, The main focus of today's episode is going to be periods (laughs) and menstrual cycles and menstrual cups and tampons and pads and all of that fun stuff. Um, heavy, heavy, heavy quotes around fun. Um, because this topic is actually pretty sensitive. And I apologize if I kind of giggle and laugh throughout this because I don't know how else to deal sometimes with situations like this, especially having the condition myself. And sometimes I just kind of like, I don't know, I laugh even though it's not funny. Um, And as always, before I really dive into it, I want to make the disclaimer that I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor. I am just somebody who wants to talk about it and have people listen and talk to you guys and help make a community. So anything that I say or suggest, um, I'm not responsible for what you choose to do with the information I put out here. And I mean, it's not like I'm going to be telling anybody to go do anything. So with all that being said, diving into it, um, there are a couple questions people asked me on Instagram to talk about, so I wanted to address that. And the most popular ones were about periods. So I feel like this episode is going to be relatively short, maybe definitely shorter than the first one, because there are actually some questions some people ask that I am not able to answer. Um, one of the most interesting questions I got, and I don't want to say who, I don't want to name any names, name any names on Instagram because I forgot to ask people to tell me, hey, let me know if you want to stay anonymous or not. So just for privacy reasons and just to be safe, I'm not going to be saying who asked me what. Um, But there was one account that reached out to me and asked about Botox for vaginismus. And I have never heard of that before. So if you guys have any insight to that, let me know in the comments below. Um, Feel free to send me a message on Instagram with any information you have because that's wild. I mean, I know that Botox like lifts your face. I've only ever heard of people getting Botox in like their faces. Never mind my vagina. I like, I don't know what that would feel like. Um, so that was an interesting question. So I can't say that I know. Another question that I got that was really interesting because I had never heard of it either, but I think that I experienced it is called urinary incontinence. And it's basically like loss of bladder control from slight or, or, or not from slight of like slight loss of urine after sneezing coughing or, or un- like and basically an inability to control urination. And I don't think that that means like you walk around um, peeing yourself. Maybe it does. I honestly don't know. Um, but that it has to do with pelvic floor tightness. And there's actually an account on Instagram who I'm collaborating with later this week. And you guys should really go check out her account. Um, I'll have her handle linked down below. She goes by Buffy. And her Instagram handle is at the pelvic health coach. So again, I'll have her account linked down below. Um, she is in medical and health, a pelvic floor physical therapist. She also has a podcast and she blogs to help women thrive as her Instagram bio says. So definitely go check her out and uh, stay tuned for how I'm going to collaborate with her. So I'm sure that I can ask some of those more medical questions to someone who is more qualified to answer them. So transitioning into the period side of things, um, I actually recently, and I didn't want to say this because in my last, I feel like self-conscious, like I made a step in the recovery process of vaginismus. Like I used a tampon and I'm so excited about it and I'm so happy about it, but I feel guilty in a way because I know that in my, between my first podcast recording and this recording. So over the last month, I'm able to overcome the step, but I feel like, oh no, like now what if people don't want to listen to me because there's not as much to relate to? So I hope that's not the case. I mean, like, I still know what this is like. And, you know, it's not like, oh, okay, I used a tampon and now I can do whatever, you know? It's really hard. And yeah, I had a lot of celebration for myself, but I don't use them regularly because just because you do it once doesn't mean you can do it again. And that's kind of the first issue that... Is issue the right word? I don't know. That's the first thing I guess I wanted to talk about is like, you know let's say that you dilate and let's say that you put your tampons in. My flow um, is pretty heavy and I can only fit in the light tampons. I cannot put in regular. I can like barely fit in regular. Um, Definitely can't go any higher than that. 
And even putting lights back in, like, it can feel really uncomfortable and really, vi like, I'm violating myself. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys, but I feel like inserting something feels wrong and feels like it shouldn't be there. So there was this one morning where I woke up with my period, put on a tampon, went to babysit that day, um, and don't worry, wearing masks, staying safe, it's all good. And I was babysitting this little girl and I had the worst cramps ever. And I always get bad cramps, but these ones were killer. Like they were just awful. And I was texting a friend and I was saying, Hey, can tampons make your cramps worse? Because I'm feeling like absolute, absolutely awful. I can't, I shouldn't curse on, I shouldn't curse on these blogs yet. Um, and she was like, yeah, sometimes that can happen. But I mean, I went to the bathroom and I was crying, not be, not just because I was in pain, but because I was like, oh my God, I, I can't do this. I need this out of me. I want, I want to get it out of me, but I didn't really prepare ahead and I didn't bring any pads and it was just so scary. And I felt bad. I, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like I ha I used one like a few weeks ago. Like, why is this so difficult now? And I thought maybe it's not in right. So I checked and it it was. And I just, I don't know. It just felt different. And, you know, later that day I came home and I had my boyfriend hold my hand while, while I got rid of it because I was just crying so hard. Like I, and, and I got mad at myself. I was so, so, so super frustrated that I was like, okay, I got it out. Now I just got to put another one back in and I have to get used to it. And I have to get my body to get used to it. And he was like, you know, maybe you should wait until you don't feel like you're forcing yourself. Like it's not a big deal. You know, right now you can just, you can wear a pad and you can go back to trying again another time. I think that you should do it when you're in a better headspace. And I completely agree. I think that when you go into these things with a headspace of panic, which I'm super prone to, but, and, and this whole circumstance, this whole having vaginismus is an anxiety inducing experience. And it's really important to let yourself kind of calm down. And if you're not calm, don't force anything. Your body is going to repetitively say no. If all you're trying to do is force your way into working with something that your body isn't ready to work with yet. Patience is so important with this. And it's so hard because as much as patience is important, five minutes is frustrating. Five seconds is frustrating. You know, I feel like even the thought of putting something back in, whether it's a tampon or a dilator or a sex toy, anything is, it's scary. So with period products, pads are, they feel like diapers, but I'd rather take a diaper over anything else right now. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. And I don't think there's anything shameful about it. I think that if that's the step you're at right now, that that's totally fine. And the question that um, some people have been asking me are about specific period products called cups and they're super super popular right now because they are good for the environment you know with pads you creates extra waste and it creates extra I don't know what pads are made out of I know some of them are made from like cotton um, and you can get pads made out of certain materials but regardless obviously something reusable is going to be a lot more envi environmentally friendly and that actually became one of my goals like I want to dilate and I want to get to a point in this curing journey, we can call it, where I want to be environmentally respectful. Now, I'm not saying in that statement, if you aren't at that step, you're environmentally disrespectful, because I know that being kind to the planet is something that a lot of people hold very near and dear to them, and I absolutely do. Um, there are things like reusable pads and period panties that, <laughs> why use the word panties? It makes me laugh. Period underwear that you can reuse. I think one of them is called Thinks and No, this is not sponsored content. I literally just saw an ad for it. And if you want, look it up yourself. I don't know if it's worth the money. Um, I want to give it a try. So if anybody actually has given um, the Thinks period underwear a try, please let me know because I really, I don't want to waste my money on stuff like that if it's not going to work um, or if it's just going to feel gross and uncomfortable. Um, but there are definitely a lot more environmentally friendly options other than a period cup when this is something that people with vaginismus can't use. Um, for now, at least, you know, pads are horrible for the environment. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that we can't, and by we, I mean people with vaginismus, we can't put a cup in there, <laughs> you know, it's, and it's hard. And I think the takeaway from things with period products is like, you should, try as much as you can to reassure yourself that where you are 
is the most important thing to to acknowledge right now. If you can't put in a tampon today, that's okay. If you can't do it in two months, that's okay. You're going to get there. You, you're going to work towards it at your own pace. Everybody has their own unique journey in this and it's scary and it's frustrating and we all just wish it weren't there. And you know, like I said in the last episode, you don't need a reason to have this. If you've never been through trauma and this is still something you're suffering from, then you're valid and you have something that is awful and scary to deal with. And I hope that you are doing anything and everything you can to try and work through it because we all deserve to be able to feel comfortable. Having our time of the month is stressful enough. Never mind having something that prevents us from, you know, feeling more comfortable or feeling like you can do more or feeling environmentally friendly. Sometimes you can't sacrifice one thing over another. And I don't think that anybody should put themselves in the position of, I have to use a tampon. I have to use a period cup. I have to use this or that because it's better than this other thing. Like you are all at your own points. And if that's where you need to be, then that's where you need to be. And I hope that you all continue to find solace in your journeys and that you all continue to find the right steps. And if it's and if right now the step you're at is staying at the one that you're on, then that's okay too. So I guess the takeaway from this whole episode is be patient with yourself. You are doing everything you can because there's such a process to this. It's not just about putting things in there. It's not just about getting used to the feeling of something. It's about having it mentally. It's about having it emotionally. This is about connecting with yourself, not just putting something there because our bodies and our brains are so much more intimate than that. So I wish you all so much love and take care of yourselves, my lovelies. I will talk to you next time. Bye.